What's up everybody? My name is Devin. Today we're working on the mushroom brooding chamber. Right here I've got all the PVC pipe that we're going to need. Originally, when I was building this, this was for a 2x2x4 two by two by grow tent build that I was doing and I wanted to use it with kind of like parts that I had laying around. This was already cut out and everything like that, but Basically all I had was just like a tape measure and a couple of pieces of PVC pipe. These are not all the same length, so like you don't need to be perfect. It's not like this is holding water or pressure or anything like that. It's just going together. It's going to be holding up the structure for us. That being said, these are all cut to four foot lengths. These are 21 and a half inches long. These smaller pieces here are going to be about 10 inches long. After that, we've got 14, eight elbows and one crop. Let's just get building. I'm not going to be using any PVC cement or anything like that because this is going to be nice to be able to take apart and clean later. So that's going to be the top. It's going to provide a lot of structure for us and some points for us to hang from. We have that T right in the middle, sorry, that cross right in the middle, and then the T's in the middle of each side, and our corner pieces, obviously at each corner. Let's keep it going. We'll go ahead and start it out upside down for now. Here's the structure for our mushroom fruiting chamber. Basically what I'm gonna do from here on, I'm going to be covering it in greenhouse plastic basically. I'm just gonna be getting some two mil plastic sheeting from Home Depot. Then I'm gonna get one of those dust barrier zippers from Home Depot or Amazon or something like that. And so I'm gonna get it tight and nice and then I'm gonna put the zippers in place. From that point, I'm gonna figure out my fresh air exchange. I'm going to be having a fogger uh, keep the humidity at like 95% and we're going to be dumping all the spores and everything out this uh, crankcase window once I finish getting that situated as well. So let's move on to the next step. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do this, but I'm thinking maybe if I could wrap around the big sides like a tube, fold the bottom up nice and pretty, and then maybe fold the top up nice and pretty and then cut off some of the excess. It might look pretty clean. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, just a little update on the mushroom grow tent. Check it out there. I just ordered some stuff from Amazon. I'm getting a zipper, a little reptile fogger, and a humidity on off switch thing. One of them things from Inkbird. Those things are really nice. I went ahead and I had this carbon filter that was like an all in one thing. It's like this four inch carbon filter. Okay, so I basically cut the housing off of that, took the carbon filter out, and now it's just a fan with a little speed controller on it. So this thing's like super simple. We love to save money. That being said, it didn't have the correct size, so I had to sort of jerry-rig some of this extra six-inch ducting with a lot of outdoor permanent tape. So that, I don't think that's going anywhere. And in order to get it connected onto the plastic, you can see it over here. Basically what I did, yeah, I took some of this super heavy-duty Gorilla Tape. I just layered it out one layer thick, super even. I got the tape lines nicely met up. I cut an X with a fresh razor blade and then I cut like a star shape out of it and I just kept on making each of the lines just a little bit longer until the six inch ducting didn't quite fit and then I forced it to fit and then I put all of the little star pieces back on uh, and I just taped it up so that's a really nice seal. For fresh air exchange, obviously I'm going to be running a negative air pressure air system hopefully. I will get a timer for this if I find that the mycelium blocks are drying out too fast but ideally this is going to be pumping 
air out at a low speed all the time. And I know that fully colonized mycelium blocks are supposed to be fairly resistant to contaminations, but I was kind of worried because I do have a grow tent in here with a fully organic living soil going, or, you know, my best attempt at it anyway. So there's gonna be a lot of microbes and stuff, even though it all is getting filtered through this carbon filter with a dust sock, I'm expecting there to be still some particles in the air. So I've gotten this allergy reduced, I don't know, it's like the nicest little one inch thick air filter that you can get from like Walmart or whatever. I cut it in half, kind of the same story. I put a layer of that black tape over it, put this filter on top. I made it in a way such that you can remove it. So if I need to change this out, then I will be able to. The idea is fresh air is gonna come in from the top, gonna go across the mycelium. It's going to be converted into CO2 and fall down to the bottom to where this duct will pick it up along with any spores or anything and shoot it out this window. And then the seams over here where the door is gonna be going, I think should seal up well enough. You know, we should have enough airflow coming from this up here to not worry about contams getting sucked in through the zipper or these gaps. Uh, any larger gap, like the one that is going to be down here, that's mostly just gonna get pumped straight back of the exhaust fan. So I got these AC Infinity zippers. Basically the way that they work, if you have like a greenhouse or something with some plastic sheathing up, you can stick it on there, cut it with a razor blade. Now you have a zipper to get in and out of. Pretty similar to those like construction dust barriers that they go up or, or whatever, but it's really simple to use. I need to have two of them up and then I'm gonna cut across the bottom here so that way I can get in and out of my grow tent. So these are three inches wide and seven feet long. So that's definitely way longer than I need. This is only four feet tall. Uh, so I'm gonna be cutting the bottom off, but let's get into it. Now, one thing that I will say, when I was putting this was, this one in, the zipper was faced in the wrong direction. It was facing down, and I was planning on pulling down, kind of bound up a little bit, so I'm making sure that the zipper sort of tucked out like this. I've got one finger underneath, grabbing it like this, and then the other finger over, over like that, and we're just pulling it down. Here, pull the zipper down. I'm gonna cut this with the These aren't intended to be split like this. Normally it's just one solid and the zipper doesn't come on and off. It just stays on. Now what I've done, I cut them through this really heavy duty tape around it. I try and cut just a touch back past, use a uh, lighter to melt it back a little bit. So you can kind of see how it's got this up and then it kind of comes back down. So this sort of sticks out a little bit. It is a little bit of a trick. This one over on the left works better than this one, but this one isn't too bad. So we'll do that. And then I tape it up just so that way it's less likely to split. There we go. Go ahead and tape that up. And then, so yeah, that's how that works. Pretty excited about 